Morning, everyone. It is uh, six oh three. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order, and uh, we'll take roll. So I am president, uh, Trustee Romero, Trustee Sullivan, Present. Trustee Dryden, Present. Okay, Trustee Nowak, no. not present. Mm -hmm. All right, Superintendent Dr. Ramirez, Present. all right, Miss uh, Peterson, Present. okay, and Miss Torres. Okay, so we are all here except for Krista Nowak. All right, can I get a motion for the adoption of the agenda? Can I get a second? Okay. Any discussion regarding the agenda for this evening? Okay, all those in favor of adopting the agenda is presented. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, the agenda is adopted for zero. All right, do we have any public comment cards for closed session this evening? Okay. So we do not. So at this point, we'll adjourn from open session to closed session and we'll reconvene hopefully in about you know, 30 minutes or so or less. So we'll see everybody back in about 30 minutes. Okay, see you then. Our back session at 7, uh, 17 and we're gonna reconvene uh, open session at 7, 18 right now and just report there was no action taken in closed session. So. Uh, continuing on, again, it took a little while there, but we'll go ahead and open the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance of Good Sand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, so moving on here, the first act or first item on our agenda is for the approval, uh, for the, uh, approval of the minutes. Can I get a motion for approval of uh, the minutes from our meeting on September 20, 2022? I move to approve the minutes. Can I get a second? Okay, motion seconded. Any discussion, corrections, or accepted minutes? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of accepting the minutes as presented? Okay. Okay, minutes are approved 4-0. Uh, audience to address the Board of Trustees. Do we have any comments from the public to address the Board of Trustees this evening? Okay, all right, hearing none, then we'll go ahead and move on to uh, Dr. Ramirez for his superintendent's report. Thank you, uh, Dr. Camby. So uh, I, if you'll excuse me, I just wanted to go back a little bit um, as part of my presentation. Uh, since we last met, we've had some pretty important uh, events happening on campus that I just wanted to highlight. And I'll just do that um, as briefly as I can. Um, we had, uh, due largely to construction, uh, we had to more or less what I call have a back to school night series. Uh, so over the last, um, dating back to the last part of September, uh, we had our back to school night for middle school. Um, and again, really great turnout. Uh, that was on, on Thursday, September 22nd. Um, and I really want to highlight um, our teachers for really uh, focusing in on uh, some common themes across across uh, grades and across content areas. Uh, specifically, um, they did discuss, of course, uh, your typical uh, grade level expectations, expectations for the course, and so on. But one other thing that I really I was very proud of our work there is um, talking to our parents and families about their efforts to really involve students in goal setting. Uh, that was something that came across. They really established annual goals and uh, they selected uh, really with the um, framework for the future in mind and the competencies there. They had the students self-reflect on those competencies and, and really set goals based on those. Still a work in progress, but I'm just very, um, I was very uh, heartened by the fact that it was something that they, that they moved forward with and that families seem to appreciate. Um, and um, the other thing about it is that it provided us a great opportunity to talk uh, more proximally about our trip to CIMI. And that would provide a really great opportunity to uh, set expectations and clarify uh, the lead up to the event uh, as it was. Um, we did also have to move our back to school night for TKK. And I was really happy to see that it was just really important for us to be able to welcome families back into their classrooms. 
as the board is aware and the community is aware, we had our TK Clay classrooms start in different um, classrooms, which everybody really weathered as best they could. Uh, we try to prioritize uh, the learning, and I think we did relatively well in that, but nothing like coming back into their classrooms. So I'm thankful to the teachers that agreed uh, to, to move uh, in that direction. Thankful to the parents who, for some of them, it was probably their third uh, back to school night, but nevertheless, they joined us. And it was just really great to see the kids in their space, in their classroom, talking to, to and about their teacher, about their learning. And that was really a great thing. Um, in addition to that, it gave teachers an opportunity to highlight that they were moving in the direction of student-led conferences, which is a new experience for us, but it's again, shaping um, and bringing student voices into the conversation. Um, and, then, and then just uh, another event that was really important, um, and we'll have a different one coming up here soon, but um, as the board is well aware for, for, for a number of years now, uh, Mesa has participated in the Channel Islands Marine Institute. It was uh, Friday through Sunday, um, and that uh, was a three-day experience. Um, seventh grade students uh, were able to attend. And one of the things that I wanna highlight is the community building, the community building among students with their chaperones, with each other, um, some just great experiences. So you just get a little bit of a taste here. Uh, they did snorkeling, they did uh, you know, a variety of hikes, uh, unfortunately, there was a delay at the end that really created a, a hike of a different sort that they wish they, they hadn't participated in. It was due to no fault of our own at all, just a mishap that created. And I'm so grateful to our chaperones, to, so grateful to our staff who just weathered that, and to our parents who were alert and trying to receive communication about things, to our bus drivers who took uh, kids there and back. Um, and I'm just, um, you know, in typical Mesa fashion, people just, you know, adapted and, and adopted to, to, to the conditions uh, afforded them. But all in all, I, I just heard very positive things coming back. Um, and it, it just serves to show, again, a great experience. One interesting part is that I really enjoy the fact that it's happening at the front end of the year. I was a little bit just monitoring what that would look like. But I think in terms of community building for that class, for that group, it's great to have that experience happen early in the year where they have the benefit of that experience throughout the year and that time very early on to keep them really motivated and engaged around learning. Um, and then looking now ahead, um, mock trial, a big, big uh, event here, not event, but, but a part, uh, program that really launched last year to much, much success. Uh, incredibly, um, just a great, great gratitude to uh, Trustee Romero um, to uh, Judge uh, Gilbert Romero and to Ms. Christina Vanarelli, who s signed up again to, to be coaches, facilitators, and they're really teachers in their own right because they are doing this, um, you know, as a service to us. And um, I'm really starting to see the program grow. I want to really highlight uh, Mrs. Romero. Uh, her uh, commitment to this went to the county office, and and they they now have brought in the junior uh, division or junior league into the fold as a program, which I think is great for all the county wide, for the entire county, for all of Ventura County. But I really wanted to highlight Mrs. Romero's efforts because she was diligent about it. And uh, it kind of surprised me with that, that uh, kind of some time ago, but um, it's just great because it official, it's an official um, now, um, division within the, the, the broader one of mock trial, and it feels more uh, supported uh, countywide. But here at Mesa, incredible interest. We had our orientation just past week. Um, you know, I was a little bit nervous, uh, not knowing what the interest might look like. And uh, I'm also incredibly thankful to Ms. Torres, who printed out all those binders. And uh, I hate to say it, but I, I've asked her to print some more because the interest has been so great. And the invitation to fifth grade students as uh, you know, future uh, participants just really starts to signal the growth of the program. And so all in all, I think it's a phenomenal opportunity for, for our kids and for our middle school in particular. Uh, I think it's a flagship program and I'm just, I couldn't be more uh, grateful to, to Mrs. Romero and, and, and all the other coaches for lending their time. And of course, to the families who are making the commitment. 
So starting tomorrow, sorry, uh, Thursday, there will be uh, practices here in this NPR uh, that will get uh, the ball rolling on a new season. I would like to add that just recently we've had interest from other counties wanting to participate in the junior high school mock trial in this county. Uh, the rules do not allow us to bring other schools from other counties. So we've had to say nicely, we, we cannot do that. But even other counties would like to participate in, in the junior high mock trial program here in Ventura County. Thank you. I mean, I, I think this is truly an instance and you know, I, I wanna be tempered with my, with, my, with my thoughts here, but truly a situation where you build it and they will come. And our families are responding in kind. Our, our kiddos are demonstrating a genuine interest. And it, the, the most appealing part for me is that it's kids that just want to be connected. It's kids that want you know, an extension of their learning. Some of them are even interested for the artistic or the drama side of things, which I think is an interesting way of, of viewing this program, but very, very, um, very real. So no matter their interests, we're seeing that uh, students are coming to, families are coming to, and you know it's just phenomenal that in, only in the start of the second year, we're receiving this kind of interest. But of course, due to the efforts of you know, the folks that you see before you and Mrs. Romero in particular, who has taken this on um, you know, very willingly. And just to add a little bit more, this year's competition will be held in the Ventura County Superior Court, as opposed to Simi Valley, uh, which is, in my opinion, uh, gonna be a great experience for the kids. It's also going to happen a little earlier, uh, which obviously puts a little more pressure on, on folks to you know, come together. Uh, but we also are very, um, we'll, we'll benefit from the fact that we'll have some returning students as well. And I think that's going to be a great thing for, for all of us. So again, thank you. I'm, I'm highlighting these important events and programs, mostly because I think they just give us a, a, a little window into you know, what Mesa has long been and where things might head in the, in the present and in the future. Uh, I wanted to just uh, move along and talk a little bit about health and health and, and safety. Um, you know, we, we continue to, to monitor um, if, you know, um, our guidelines, although have been dramatically relaxed, they are still, um, uh, there, are, there are still guidelines that we need to abide by. And I'll talk a little more about this later when we talk about um, attendance um, as well, because I think this is where we're seeing you know, the impact continue to, to, to surface. Um, I wanted to move into uh, giving an overview around facilities. Um, and you know, Ms., uh, Ms. Peterson is here and I know I wanna be very thankful of BSA, of uh, our uh, BSA's director of MOT, uh, Orlando de Leon, who has just been everything to this particular project. So I'm thankful to BSA and their partnership very thankful to Mr. De Leon uh, because he has been here, I mean, on a daily basis and even on the weekends. So I just wanted to highlight uh, their efforts, but wanted to give you an overview of where we are. Um, we have encountered delays. I don't think that this is a, a secret or anything new, but I wanted to provide some context as to why those delays have occurred. Um, among other things, the biggest uh, uh, challenge was uh, a ruling that came from the Department of State Architects that um, we weren't expecting that um, had to do with completing the roofing over buildings A and B. And I think that really has created a, 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 a situation where we, our kitchen, main office, health office, certain areas have been more impacted. We've weathered it, we've moved forward with things, but in order to resolve that, uh, we needed a lot of uh, attention, a lot of inter in intervention and intermediate uh, mediation amongst ourselves, working with our contractor and architects and trying to find the best path forward. So I wanna represent that because this was completely unanticipated and unfortunately created, um, I'm afraid to say a weeks long delay. Uh, but we are back on schedule. Um, at this point today, as a matter of fact, uh, over the last two days, um, they've been diligently working in that space. The priority right now is getting our kitchen fully functional. And that is where, we're, where the contractors have been asked to, to provide the most attention, not to say that it's the only piece, but it is um, you know, a major focal point. 
And all throughout, the intent was to ensure that we continue to uh, maintain a 40-year warranty on the roofing project that was just finished this past year. So it needed to meet specs. It needed to be done with integrity. And so just understand that uh, this is what's created, at least in part, some delays here that we did not anticipate once we started this school year. Um, we This coming month of November, I am expecting to bring forward for approval um, a number of um, change orders, which uh, have, uh, as you see there, have um, led to an incurred cost. Over the last uh, several, really since the start of the project, we have been working hand in hand, BSA, our architects, 196, and our contractor, Monet Construction, working very diligently, everybody communicating uh, pretty effectively throughout the summer and dating all the way back to spring. Unfortunately, there were some unforeseen circumstances is really what it boils down to. And you'll see that more fully when you see that uh, amount come forward. Um, our modernization of buildings has entailed um, opening buildings up that have not been open and, and addressed in decades. And unfortunately, the conditions that we found in many instances were such that we could not simply move forward with the original scope, but required additional um, um, attention and work to address those core issues. So I just want to sunshine that for the board, bring it forward. Um, and we have been prioritizing and controlling costs at every turn. Um, and uh, none of what you see really is anything having to do with changes in design or any second guessing after the fact. Everything really has to do with the conditions that were for the better part unforeseen. And uh, the board in previous instances has seen pictures or received information relative to those conditions. So as it pertains to this project now, here's where we stand. Uh, construction has been <clears throat> completed in CD and E. And as of this week, we expect that our <clears throat> HVAC system will be operational in all of those spaces. Uh, wing E already has an operational HVAC system. There's some things that need to be finalized there, of course, but they are operational. And we are expecting that uh, A and B in particular to be completed in the next, uh, in the next coming two weeks, uh, because that roofing really has been the priority. Uh, just this morning, early this morning, um, we had cranes in here to uh, bring down the unit that um, we needed to address the roofing underneath that unit, which had already been installed. Again, and pointing to these changes that we experienced from DSA. Um, and then lastly, for food services, um, we continue to extend the partnership with More Park Unified. So I'm very grateful to that partnership, but it is one that um, I'm hoping in a, in a good way comes to an end very soon because we, we, we want our, our uh, food services to be back uh, under our umbrella. Um, so there's just some pictures that we've seen before of the exterior of the buildings. And again, more, more to come as soon as the project is complete. Um, in terms of attendance, um, just switching gears here to attendance, um, you see the attendance figures. Um, I wanted to make August, it was a very short month, if you will, not, not really a month, but a number of days uh, at the latter part of August. In September, we our, our attendance looks more accurate to what it could be projected for the year. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of comments. One is that uh, the goal is to maintain a, an attendance of 95 and above. Um, we continue to experience challenges with uh, COVID and kids being out either because they've had COVID or because family members have got COVID or because there's a concern over COVID. All of these uh, realities continue to operate and um, they are very challenging to work through, very challenging to, to capture. And we definitely wanna stress attendance, but we always have to balance that with the reality of, of safety and health as an overall concern. Uh, but please know that we are monitoring individual students, that we are informing and communicating with parents and families, not just in day to day, but now that we've seen maybe some bigger trends, we are, in, we are addressing it in a more formal fashion, wherever that's appropriate and needed. And uh, this will continue to uh, be a focal point for us throughout the year. And lastly, uh, just some upcoming events. This is by no means an exhaustive list. In fact, um, by no means an exhaustive list, I'll leave it there. 
But we, we do have a family movie night coming up this Friday, which I certainly invite the public, or, you know, our families and the board, if you wish to, to come and, and, and join us. So that's coming up. And then MEF is having their casino night. And then um, uh, October 31st is a non-student day. It is a work day for certificated staff and 12 month employees. And with that, I'm concluding my superintendent's report. Thank you very much, Dr. Ramirez. Any uh, questions for Dr. Ramirez regarding his report? I guess I just have a question on timing. Um, so then it sounds like, so two weeks after that. So like the second week of November, do we expect all construction and painting and whatnots to be completed? We certainly do. I mean, that is really uh, the best uh, estimate um, at this point. I think the bulk of it will be done largely by the end of next week um, is what we've been informed most recently or I've been informed most recently. Um, barring any unforeseen circumstances. And unfortunately we've encountered more than our share. Uh, that, is, that is the goal. I, I, would, I would like to say this, in the grand scheme of things, this project given its size and scope is actually moving along very, very well uh, for anybody who has been involved in uh, modernizations on a school facility like this. Uh, I think we're, we're on the plus side, both financially and in terms of our timing. But understanding that this is the first time we go through it, it has it has gone beyond the, the timelines we expected. But yes, to answer your question, we expect that that be the case. And then as for the attendance policy or the absence policy, I think it used to be basically if your child missed two days, you would get an email or a call from the office to follow up. Is that still our current practice? So our current practice is to follow up daily. And so we're in, we're in uh, our front office is in, and Ms. Ms. Kuklinski is in regular contact. What I was more alluding to is uh, we have what's called a uh, uh, school attendance review board. And in order to you know, bring together that group of professionals here on campus, we need to be able to notify uh, parents in writing that, um, you know, that, that we're concerned about attendance. And I can tell you that we already moved ahead with that first round of letters and in some instances, even a second round. And uh, it's being addressed in a couple of different ways. Uh, and ultimately what we're interested in is working with our families to ensure that kids are here. That's really what we want because any missed time, in addition to the time that has already been uh, so difficult in prior years, um, it's just, it creates a, a very difficult set of conditions for us to maximize and optimize learning for kids. Any other questions or any other comments? Okay. So moving along, we have uh, board members' reports and communications. Under correspondence, we've received correspondence from the Ventura County Office of Education receiving the 2022-2023 adopted budget for the Golden Valley Charter School. And we also received a letter from <clears throat> Ventura County Office of Education uh, reviewing the 2022-2023 adopted budget report and the LCAP for the Mesa Union School District. Um, any, and moving on B, any board members reports or communications? Okay, hearing none. And then any board members interest or concerns to express? I have a question in regards, um, are we doing any drama production this year? We've done that in past years. We didn't do it during COVID years. But is that something we're looking, usually I think it's done in the spring. Is that something that we're, we're looking into? We are looking into it, we are. Um, it's very early, but we're reaching out to a, to a couple of folks that we already know, including some folks who have helped us uh, put on those productions. Um, and we're trying to examine what, what option might seem best, uh, but it's still very early, uh, but I predict that we will, we will you know, put something forward soon. Okay, any other? Yeah, if, well, just in conjunction with that, I hope that as you move forward that some sort of elective with regards to documenting it, be it either through still photography or videography, uh, be incorporated with that, so that the students, you know, have an if they're not really drama oriented, but there's other back office things that they can be involved with, and perhaps if there was an elective, it might be coming up to support that.
Okay, good ideas there. Okay, anything else? All right, moving on to item 10, which is the consent agenda. Can we get a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? I move that we adopt the consent agenda. I get a second. I'll second the motion. Okay. Any discussion or concerns regarding the consent agenda? Okay. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda as uh, presented? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Consent agenda is adopted for zero. All right. Moving on to our next item is interview for applicants for the appointment of the Board of Trustees. And at this I, point, I'd like to make a motion. Go ahead. Uh, it, Dr. Ramirez, and we only have one candidate, is that correct? That is correct. I move that we appoint uh, Dr. Neil Canby uh, to be the, to fill the position of, that's vacated by in his area to be the new trustee. I second. Okay, any further discussion or questions? Okay, all those in favor of approving Dr. Neil Canby as the appointed trustee for my area, which is area three. three. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, four zero. So thank you very much, everyone. Looking forward to working with you for another four years. All right, so moving on, um, the uh, next item is the consideration of the adoption of resolution 22-23-03 in recognition of National Red Ribbon Week. Motion to approve. I so move. Okay, can I get a second? I'll second. Okay, any questions or discussion regarding the uh, National Red Ribbon Week? Okay, all those in favor for the adoption of 22-23-03 for Red Ribbon Week, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, four zero. Next item is a consideration of the acceptance of the receipt of the Golden Valley Charter School Annual Program Audit 2021-2022. Can I get a motion for the approval of that? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, can I'll I second. get a second? Okay, Mr. Sullivan, thank you. Any discussion regarding the uh, Golden Valley Charter School annual programming audit from 2021-2022? Okay, all right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, four, zero. And then we have the consideration of the acceptance of the quarterly report on the Williams Uniform Complaint complaints for the quarter ending September 2022. Can I get a motion for the approval of that report? I so move. Okay, can I get a second? I'll second the motion. Okay, any questions or discussions? Just that there were no complaints. There were no complaints. Okay, very good. All those in favor of the approval of the quarterly report? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? None. Okay, that is four zero. All right, so moving on here, we have the consideration of the approval of the MOU with Cal Pass California Partnership for Achieving Student Success. Can I get a motion for the approval of that? I move that we approve the MOU with Cal Pass. Uh, partnership. Any motion? Okay. Any questions or discussion on this? Yes. Um, have we done this before? Or is this a new requirement? It's a new requirement as part of the Strong Workforce Program, um, and that is done in partnership with Oxnard Union. It, it's a requirement. It is a requirement because it provides. Uh, they are basically a data warehouse uh, that allows higher ed and public schools primarily to be able to exchange uh, information and data about uh, student uh, progress uh, toward uh, career technical education. As I read about this previous, there was a previous provider that's no longer being used. Is CalPass the only provider? I wouldn't be able to answer that. I know that that's whom uh, were referred to by uh, Oxnard Union. So they facilitated the MOU. Uh, with us, and then I can't I can't answer that uh, beyond um, beyond that. And so my follow up would just be: this is about sharing of information and data. It would be nice to also receive that data. So if they are tracking students, and if they end up in different fields, and how they progress through education, it would be lovely to also receive that data. I believe it's online. Oh, yeah, it, it is. It is part of the partnership to. To basically sharing that data, I just I'm not familiar with uh, what their longitudinal data looks like. Uh, I went to their website and went online and looked at that, and so there's some generic information, but whether or not it's specific to fields that they go into or anything like that, I did not see anything like that. It was 
or on a school or Mesa kids sure. get into that. I'm not sure how yeah. granular the data is. I, I I don't know that it's going to get that granular, particularly because <clears throat> it's uh, once you start getting into basically adult data, it's a lot harder. Most of the data that's captured about plans post um, high school are self-reported, uh, oftentimes by students as they are exiting in 12th grade. So it becomes a little more challenging unless they go to UC CSU system, which then provides uh, some of that data. But if you're talking about privates or sometimes community colleges, it, it starts to get a little difficult. So I, I don't know that it's gonna be granular that way, but we'll find out. Okay, any other concerns, questions, discussion? First of all, I just have to say, I, I love the fact they use the word granular. That's, that's a phenomenal <laughs> word. Love the word. Double word score there. Okay, any other further questions or discussions? Okay, all those in favor of the uh, approval of the MOU with Cal Pass California Partnership for Achieving Student Success, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, four zero. Next is a fun one, uh, consideration of the approval of the sixth grade field trip request to Poly Institute from November 2nd through 4th of this year. I get a motion for approval. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second that motion. Okay, all right, any questions or discussions? Yes. Go ahead. I have a question. Well, actually it's a request. That upon conclusion of this, that we get them to come back and talk about their trip. I'd like to have a, uh, a group of students be able to come address the board regarding their experience. I really would like to hear about from the students about the CME trip as well. Okay, Dr. Mearson, you can make that happen. <laughs> we'll try. We'll try. Okay. Request noted there, we'll try to make that happen. Okay, any other questions or discussion regarding the Pali trip for November uh, 2nd through 4th this year? Okay, all those in favor of the approval of the sixth grade field trip to Pali Institute, November 2nd through 4th, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, no opposed. All right, uh, so the next item is the approval of the renewed proposal with the Ventura County Arts Council and arts services provided during the 2022-2023 school year. Can I get a motion for approval of that? I'd like to move that we approve the renewal of the proposal of the Ventura County Arts Council for the art services provided during the 2022-2023 school year. I'll second the motion. Okay, a second. Any questions or discussion regarding the uh, proposal with the Arts Council? Just a comment that the funds are coming from both the MEF Foundation and from um, other funding from the state. I had a discussion with this, uh, with a group of constituents saying that even before we had these outside funds, that Mesa has always felt it important to fund the arts. Even when times were lean, we still funded the arts and uh, deem it to be a very critical part. Because um, I saw one of our former uh, music teachers, you know, comment about that, saying that they're excited about this grant, but it's a matter of making it a priority. And I, I just want to acknowledge the fact that this board and our administration has always made that uh, an important part. Even when times were tough, we made that an important part that the arts was still a part of Macy Union because it's critical. Noted in the continued support, especially from both MEF and PFO. Well, MEF has been awesome in supporting this. So a reminder about their program that's coming up. Very good. Okay, any other questions or concerns regarding the uh, uh, proposal, renewal of the proposal between the Ventura County, County Arts Council? Um, any questions or discussion any further? Okay, all those in favor for the approval of the renewal of uh, the proposal with Ventura County Arts Council for the art services provided during the 2022-2023 school year. All those in favor? Aye. All right, all those opposed? None, Group four zero. Item H is a first read for the September 2022 board policy revisions or sections. These are information only if the first read, correct? Okay, no action to be taken on that at this time. Um, and then moving on, we have- uh, Go ahead, ahead. Amby, if you don't mind. I, I made some comments you know, to the board. I would really strongly encourage the board to take a look at uh, the reading um, of, of the policy as presented. Um, and uh, you have some notes, you know, from me, not exhaustive notes, but just notes highlighting 
uh, some of the some of the changes, particularly to um, uh, issues pertaining to civil and legal rights. And this is mostly uh, on the part of the employee, uh, but there have been some important um, cases before the Supreme Court. In fact, one of them that have uh, led to some changes that I think are important for us to understand and um, and for the board to be aware of as you look to make approval. So a question I'm gonna follow up with then, because you made notes on um, what would be a minor impact and what might have a more significant impact. There were also some board policy numbers that were not in either of those lists. Okay. And so do those ones not affect us at all or sh should they be in one of those? They, they, they would probably be under the not, under the minor impact if they weren't if they weren't explicitly uh, put out under moderate or high, but I will revisit that list. Thank you for making that clear for us and directing our attention to those policies that are gonna really affect the way we do business. So thank you, Dr. Ramirez. All right, and so now moving on to next is uh, personnel items. And so we have uh, A, which is the consideration of the resignation of the following classified staff. Uh, Mr. Oliveras, bus driver facilities worker, effective September 30, 2022. Got a motion for approval. I move that we accept his resignation. I second the motion. Okay, second. All those in favor for accepting the uh, resignation of Mr. Jose Oliveras, the bus driver facilities worker, effective September 30, 2022. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. All those opposed? None. All right, so item 13, items for future consideration. We have the uh, local control accountability plan renewal uh, future item. And then our next meeting is scheduled currently for November 15th. Um, there is discussion that that might need to have a different date to confirm myself as I have a conflict on that day. And if we could potentially uh, consider one of the three dates that are listed there that you might be available. I don't think we need to make a decision this evening, but when we put out the uh, agenda, we can make, make a plan of that. That falls under the Thanksgiving holiday, though. On the 8th? Okay. So we need to move it because you're not available on the Tuesday. Yeah, and we could move forward. Is that going to, is it specifically? Yeah, yeah, it was it was brought it was brought forward just you know a consideration just to see if there was you know some flexibility in everybody's schedule. Um, so the eighth would be out, understood. Um, the 29th, I heard the 29th might be of interest, and obviously it would be of great interest to 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 me. I'll just speak for myself in having all board members be present for the meeting, particularly if we have a little bit of time in advance. To, to perhaps adjust. If we, if we can agree on the 29th, would that be available or we can? Okay. All right. So see, it appears we have a consensus from the group. The 29th will follow up on that formally, but at this time we'll tentatively schedule. Yeah, we'll agendize and publish uh, the time. Perfect. So uh, the board just needs to be cohesive on that and it looks like we are okay it looks like you are sorry very good thank you all right so with that being said we'll go ahead and adjourn tonight's meeting at uh 7 57 okay i almost gave it military but i had to correct it 1957 okay all right thanks everyone see you thank next you. time bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.